Today, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the subject of thermite, the powder that burns hot enough to turn rock into lava, extract metals from stone, and that can melt the locks off doors. It's the best material that you can have at your disposal when there's no factory or old-timey blacksmith around to work with metal anymore. And best of all, you can make the ultimate military aid in a single afternoon using only two ingredients that you probably already have in your kitchen right now. Thermite has been the best kept secret for survivalists for decades, and it's time you learn about it too. So let's get into it. Thermite uses and history. Now, first off, why would you even need an incendiary powder for survival? Well, there's more applications to thermite than you'd think. So before we get into the making of it, let's look at what it was originally intended for and how you can apply those same rules to a doomsday scenario. Thermite was first invented by a German engineer with the intention to weld train tracks together in the late 1800s. And like everything that comes out of a German engineer's workshop, thermite turned out to be so damn effective that it's been used to cut through steel, to refine metals, and in military operations to blast through steel doors and bunkers. It's also used to make munitions that blow people to smithereens and to disable the enemy's boom booms to stop them from blowing the other side to kingdom come. You see, thermite isn't just flammable. This stuff gets so hot so fast that it burns at 2500 degrees Celsius. That's around 4500 degrees Fahrenheit to our American friends. Now, that's enough to melt steel and liquidize gold. If you're going to get technical about it, it's made from aluminum powder and metal oxide, which only needs the spark from a blade of flint to ignite. We're going to get to how to make it in just a second. Spoiler alert, it's easier than the chlorine rocket you made in your backyard as a kid. But first, let's talk about the applications in a survival scenario. You know, besides making fire to cook up your beans. If the world does go to hell completely and there's nothing but rubble left, there will always be a lot of steel around. And to rebuild anything, you're going to need to be able to work with the steel to rebuild structures and repair everything from your car to your kettle. If you don't have any iron to fix or construct something, then the iron can be extracted from the aluminum foil that you'll be using to make the thermite from. It's not like there's a shortage of the amount of aluminum foil in landfills or any abandoned buildings for that matter. Even if it's been looted completely bare, there's probably still going to be a foil wrapper discarded in a corner somewhere. Thermite also burns so hot that it can extract metals from stone. You're quite literally making lava from the rocks you subject that level of heat to. Unfortunately, learning how to become a full-blown blacksmith overnight is just not feasible. But if you've got some thermite and you've tried your hand at welding ever in your life, well, you just became the world's most valuable tradesman, and that will forever be needed. Sure, you can use it as an incendiary item to destroy buildings, weapons, or vehicles if you're ever in a combat situation, but the practical uses for something that can burn as hot as thermite can are even more emergent than a survival or apocalyptic event. No item or supply will ever be as valuable as a man's practical skills and the knowledge in his noggin. And there are few advancements in science as important and as life-changing as working with steel has been. And it's also one of the first advantages we're going to lose as a society when the grid goes down and all hell breaks loose. So now that we've got the enormous advantages of thermite out of the way, let's get into actually making it using only two ingredients. But before we get to the fun stuff, you know what time it is. It's that time in the video where we have to get down on our knees and beg you guys to subscribe. Look, we see you commenting, we see you returning every week, we know you're there. If you keep on coming back week after week, isn't it about time you just made the jump and subscribed already? Alright, alright, begging's done for today. Let's get on to the reason that you came here today. Making thermite. Making thermite. First, let's get your ingredients. You'll need aluminum powder, iron oxide powder, and an ignition point. If that sounds like you're in the back of a chemistry class, don't worry about it. It's actually not as complicated as it sounds. Aluminum powder can be made from aluminum foil. Iron oxide can be made from sand, steel wool, or buying it for relatively cheap at your local hardware store. Now, since sand has loads of impurities and we're running on the assumption that every store will be shut down so you can't just go buy the powder, 
we're going to use steel wool for this round. But if you are going to buy your own iron oxide, just make sure it's the real thing and not synthetic iron oxide. Just check the label and you should get by just fine. So you need rusted old crummy steel wool. Now, if you're in a hurry, you can spray your steel wool with a mixture of vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, and salt to make it rust instantly. But since we don't have any stores open to buy those items, you're just going to leave it outside in an open bucket for a few weeks. It'll rust nice and brown for you all on its own. Now, once it's rusted, you can simply crush it to a dust between your hands until you are left with a fine reddish brown powder. Or you can pulverize it with a mortar and pestle. Then chuck that powder into a bucket of water. The iron oxide will now sink to the bottom. Now throw out the water and the lighter silt and leave the iron paste out in the sun until the water's evaporated. Now you've got a relatively pure form of powdered iron oxide ready to go. Set that aside and move on to the aluminum foil to make your aluminum powder. As the word would imply, you need to ground it into a powder as well. But this is a lot harder than you think since foil scrunches up into itself. It's made to be moldable, not crushable. Grinding it with a mortar and pestle is going to take you days just to get a few grams of powder. Instead, try rolling it into a tight ball and start grating it over a piece of sandpaper or even a brick with a fine grain. It'll still take you quite a few hours to get a sufficient amount, and it's a hell of a workout, but it's the quickest way to do it without a power source or an industrial tool. Now, keep in mind, the finer your powders are, the better the end results will be. Now, for educational purposes, if you're working with aluminum powder and iron oxide in a controlled setting, it's important to understand the correct proportions. A common ratio used in scientific demonstrations is 1 to 3, meaning for every part of aluminum powder, you would typically pair it with 3 parts of iron oxide. For instance, if you have 10 parts aluminum, you would use 30 parts of iron oxide. The ratio stays consistent no matter what the quantity being used is. Now stir the two ingredients together thoroughly, and that's it. You've created a mixture with similar properties to thermite. Now always ensure proper safety measures and adhere to legal guidelines when handling these materials. Seriously, the final step of the experiment is igniting the material, which requires a higher temperature than you might expect. See, a standard flame won't be sufficient. Typically, high temperature sources like a blowtorch or a magnesium strip can generate enough heat, but in this scenario, those may not be accessible. Fortunately, certain materials do reach high temperatures at the moment of ignition. For example, match heads contain phosphorus, sulfur, and potassium chlorate, and when bundled together, they can briefly produce the necessary heat. Now, always prioritize safety and follow proper guidelines when handling flammable materials. You can also seek out flammable materials in nature. For example, bat guano is high in phosphorus, sulfur deposits are numerous on every continent. Basically what we're getting at is that you're going to need to get creative when there's no electricity around to produce the kind of heat you'd need to ignite it. Thermite putty. Then there's the topic of making a putty from it. Now, let's face it, the powder itself is very useful, but fine powder is easy to spill, wind can blow it away, and it will never stand stable enough for you to keep it in place while building a tower. Working it into a putty makes it much easier to use and to keep it stable. Also, sticking a fuse into it will make it more like a little tower of volcanic heat that's directed to wherever you want it to burn. Any kind of putty will do. Whether you make it from scratch or buy a moldable putty at your local art supply store. And there's also ways to make putty from natural materials, but that's a long discussion for another video. To ensure the particles remain properly blended, it's crucial to maintain a ratio where the thermite content is higher than the putty. Mixing the thermite with the putty until the desired consistency is achieved helps maintain this ratio and preserve the thermite's characteristics. Also, storing putty rolled into small, quick-to-use balls makes it easier to store without restricting your movements. Speaking of storage, that's not complicated either. For the putty, just use a regular old Ziploc baggie, and the raw powder can be stored in any plastic. You just need to keep moisture out of it. Besides a container that seals properly, a couple of silica gel packets thrown inside won't go amiss either. Word of warning. Now we get to the warning label needed for any topic that involves fire. Even though thermite isn't combustible, as in it doesn't explode, it is one of the most flammable and hottest burning materials that you can make yourself. 
So gloves and a safety mask are essential when working with it. This stuff can melt rock. If it falls on you, it's going to burn through flesh, fat, and bone like you're made of butter. Nothing puts it out until it's stopped burning, not sand or a blanket, and dousing it in water only causes it to splatter, making the situation even worse. The iron in it acts as an oxidizer, so it doesn't need oxygen to burn, so there's no putting it out once it's lit. If you're going to use thermite, have a formulated plan in mind. Set out your materials and don't scramble for last minute items after it's been lit. Planning appropriately and wearing protection is going to go a long way in keeping you safe. And for the love of all that is good, don't get the powder close to electrical appliances or tools that can throw off any sparks. You don't want to end up burning your house down with your own experiments that were supposed to save your life in a shit hits the fan scenario. Now, warnings aside, have fun experimenting. And please, let us know the results in the comments when you do. See you next time, and as always, this is Threat to Survival. Prepare today, thrive tomorrow. Embrace the Threat to Survival.